something. Before we get into that, let me ask you a question. This baffled me. And and, and I'm a big Canelo fan. Uh, my uh, my buddy Gerald McCoy says that I'm a fanboy when it comes to Canelo. I'm a big Canelo fan. What? Who in the world is this guy that is being mandated for him to fight? And it's kind. Of, this is where I find it weird. They're stripping him of the belt for not taking this fight. But Benavidez waited like four years and never got his belt stripped. Marco, can you please? Make some sense of this because I'm completely baffled at how Benavides is the bigger name. Definitely should be getting the fight. This individual, I've never even heard of him. What are you talking and about the WBC? The or huh? just so you talking about the WBC, what they're doing? Or all of them are doing it? Well, oh, I mean, how does how does I, I think it's the IBF that's stripping him, right? I'm not sure. But how are they how does this guy become the number one contender? I don't know who the hell he is. And how are they moving faster than, I think it was the WBC or WBA when it came to Benavides? How is that even possible at this point? Like, what? what how does this transpire? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I know why they didn't strip him. You know, sanctioning fees and Canelo, Canelo generates so much money each fight that their sanctioning fees are going to be... You know, they're making damn near a million dollars in sanctioning fees every Canelo fight. So they'd much rather have that than if Benavides fights, their sanctioning fees are probably like 20000 I mean, you know, it's a big difference. So that's why they didn't strip him. But, because he's just going to pay the sanction fees. What's that? Because when he fights and they, he's basically paying a sanctioning fee to have the belt, correct? Well, every time you fight uh, for a belt, if the belt's on the line, you it's 3% of your purse goes to oh shit i didn't know that sanctioning body yeah that's the and that so for example the last undisputed heavy uh the last undisputed welterweight champion in the three belt era is who the last undisputed champion in the three belt era welterweight is in who? the welterweight i would I, in the three belt era would be floyd no no manny no so it's a trick question it was when zab beat Spinks. Okay. Oh, Corey Spinks. Okay. And then Zab lost to Carlos Baldemir. Do you remember that? Yes, Carlos Baldemir, who Floyd Avenger ended the fight in. Yep. So Carlos Baldemir beat the undisputed champion, but Carlos Baldemir is not the last undisputed welterweight champion in the three-belt era. The last undisputed welterweight in the three-belt is still Zab. Why? Baldemir didn't want to pay the sanctioning fees, so even though he won, he did not keep the belts. So you have to pay to keep the belts? You have to pay it because and I get it partially. They're still a company. They still need money to operate. You know, they have they have people who work there, they have you know, clerical people, they have administrators, they have CEOs, mm -hmm. you know, they need to make some money. So I get it. But the way that the majority of their money is by sanctioning fees. That's why you have all these extra belts now. The super champion, the regular That's champion. So stupid. They all pay three percent when they fight. That's but why each belt. each belt. So, and obviously, though, usually only the main belts are going to be the ones that are generating a lot of money where the sanctioning fees are even significant. Mm -hmm. So every fight is 3%. And Canelo is, Canelo and Tank, really just Canelo and Ryan, but he's not a champion. Yeah. Canelo is the one who generates the most amount of money for his purse. Therefore, the 3% of his $50 million is damn near a million or whatever it is. Whereas, three, yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, was it seven hundred thousand something like that? I could do it right now. Uh, look, yeah, yeah. Canelo got what twenty million his last fight. What did he get? No, he got forty. I think it was either forty or thirty. It was forty, I think. Okay, let's do forty. Forty million plus three percent is that's one point two million. So they make one point two million in sanctioning fees. What? Right? That's what they make in sanctioning fees. So that's each belt. For Canelo's fight, for each each belt, right, right, it's three percent. Now Benavidez got what? What do you think Benavidez got? Less I don't even than know. Do you, you, you think even that much? Because I don't. Maybe less, three. Maybe I don't know. Let's say three million, right? I mean, he is opening up for the, the tanks, so it can't be that much. So that's ninety thousand. So you want to get one point two million or ninety thousand? That's why they don't strip him. So. If that's the case, why? And again, I don't know if it's the IBF, but why are they now 
man- mandated him to fight this individual? Um, that I don't know. I don't know why they chose him. It doesn't really matter who they mandate him to fight because besides Benavidez, nobody really stands a chance. Nobody else is a name. So then why strip him and lose that $1.2 million? That, that's where I, I'm lost. IBF is the one organization of the four that is known to be a little less money hungry. Um, They're the ones who are known to strip people when they should be stripped, do things that they should do more often. And they're not, they're still probably, you know, but they're the ones that are known to be a little more on the, on the up and up. Yeah, because if, if, at the end of the day, let's say they strip them. Now it's vacated, right? And now you're going to have somebody fight for it. You're not making nowhere near as much money for that belt. And Melo could continue to do what he wants. I was wondering, because I'm like, something had to have transpired. Something. Out of, out of the blue. I don't, even, I don't even know who this guy is, to be honest with you. And a lot of boxing people don't know who the hell he is. I mean, do you know who he is? 